Hi, I'm Dana of the Fuji Gals. I'm here with our resident cinematographer and video expert, Mr. Michael Bobenko. Michael's going to walk us through simple setup for shooting 4K video with the X-T2. So stay tuned to learn more. So Michael, I'm so excited to be talking about 4K video with you. So you're going to show us a few things, like setting the optimum settings in the menu, using the boost grip with headphones, and recording via HDMI out, right? So take it away, Michael. So the first thing you want to know about the X-T2 is, unlike a lot of uh, consumer cameras out there, and even the X-T1 before it, you notice there's no magic red record button on here. So the camera works either as a stills camera or as a video camera. And the way to get it into video mode is up here on the mode control dial underneath the ISO. You just flip it to the little movie camera icon and now it is in video mode. At which point you see your microphone indicators and everything else that you've customized on the display, the frame rate and things like that. Now your recording options for the camera are uh, threefold. First, you can record to the internal SD card, and in the menu, you can tell it which of those card slots you want to designate for the movie files. You can go to card one or card two, it's up to you. Um, or you can record externally through the HDMI port located on the other side. Now, it's a micro HDMI, so there's, those cables are readily available. And when you're recording to HDMI, you also have two options. One is to use the built-in film simulations or other uh, color controls that you would find in the Q menu, like highlights and shadows and saturation, uh, and all the different film simulations like Acros or black and white and the standard and the Velvia. Um, or the HDMI can also then be put into a, the F-log encoding. F-log stands for Fuji log which is used for color grading. By itself, the F-log looks absolutely terrible. Uh, this is not something you're going to shoot with unless you're going to do post-production on the picture to manipulate the color and the exposure more after you've shot it. That's not to say that's necessary. If you can get it in camera and you get the look, uh, the color, the exposure perfectly right, then you can shoot it using the built-in film simulation. You don't have to do it with the F-log. When you do record the video to the internal SD card, so the data rate for that is 100 megabits per second when you're doing the 4K UHD. It's very, very robust. That is in 420 color subsampling. When you go to the HDMI out to an external recorder, that is in 422 color subsampling. Much better for grading much more color accurate. Uh, something else that you want to know about is the microphone jack on the camera is located here on the side. It's a 3.5 millimeter jack. But the headphone jack is part of the vertical power booster. So if you do want to do professional audio monitoring, and it's not to say you have to have expensive headphones, you can use regular earbuds, they plug right into the, uh, the plug that's down here in the vertical power booster. So let's talk a little bit about the settings. So we talked about the film simulations, but a couple of other things in the menu that you want to know about, and this would be down in the dedicated movie menu, is of course you would set your resolution and your frame rate, uh, 2398 or 30 or whatever it is you want to shoot at. Um, and something very important if you're using an external recorder through the HDMI out, is you want to turn the HDMI record control, you want to make sure that's set to on. That way, when you hit the shutter button to trigger the recording on the camera, the external recorder will automatically start and stop along with the shutter button. Um, also, there's the microphone level adjustment in the menu, but what I have done is I have customized my Q menu to add a microphone level adjustment right there on the Q menu. It makes it a lot faster. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Dana. And thank you for tuning in.